All right, people, Mr. Wright here with lesson four for the alto saxophone. Uh, first, you want to put your case on a nice, stable place. I've got it up high so that you can see it as I open it up. I've already taken out of this little side pouch some of the items that I'm going to need. Now, your case is going to probably look different. This is a, uh, a, a different case than the one that originally came with the saxophone. So yours will look pretty different, but uh, there'll be some similarities. But out of this little side pouch, I've already gotten my reed and different things out of this uh, out of this case right here. But I'm going to uh, open it up and uh, to let you see what's inside. When we do grab the saxophone bell, we will or pick up the saxophone. We're going to grab it by the bell. That way we won't bend any keys. And uh, but first of all, what we're going to do is talk about a few things when you first open up your saxophone. A lot of times the mouthpiece will already have a reed on there. If so, you want to take that reed off and you do that by loosening these ligature screws right here and that this ligature, this metal piece, and the, notice on my most uh, beginning saxophone mouthpiece ligatures, the, the screws will face towards you. They'll be on this side of the mouthpiece and the screws will be facing off to the right. But I'm gonna just take this off and uh, I'm gonna put the uh, mouthpiece on top of this gooseneck right here about where it normally goes and you probably want to put, the first time you'll probably want to put some cork grease on there. I've got some in my case. It looks like a tube of chapstick. You just rub it on the, on the cork right there so that the mouthpiece will go on there nice and snug. You don't want to bend this too much. You want to make sure you're grabbing where there's no octave key mechanism right here. And another thing I like to do, as soon as I get open up my case and I find the reed, the reed will be in a little, most of the time, a little plastic case like so, and you just slide it right out. I've been soaking my reed in this little oboe reed soaker cup and I just dip it in there and let it soak for about two minutes when you have a brand new reed especially. But mine's been soaking already so I'm going to wipe off the excess moisture and uh, I've already put my mouthpiece on top of the uh, gooseneck here of the alto sax and with the opening facing down towards the scoop right here toward that curve. And then I'm going to just lay the uh, reed onto the table, the flat part of the mouthpiece is called the table. So I'm gonna lay it on there with the tip of the mouth in, of the reed. This is, by the way, very, very fragile, so you wanna be very careful not to chip that. You wanna be very careful with it, and the reed can last you a good bit of time if you do so. And uh, I've laid it there so that I can see just a pencil thin line of the black mouthpiece over the reed. And I'm just gonna get it kinda of close to that, because once you put the ligature on there, it might move. So I'm gonna put it on there and I'm gonna make sure that this ligature is loose enough to where it comes beneath where the bamboo is cut. I wanna be able to see the bark of the bamboo. It's a little darker region and up above it where it's been shaved, I wanna be able to have uh, this ligature sitting uh, beneath that shaved part right there. And then again, I'm gonna take my thumbs, kinda of wiggle it, the reed back and forth to, and I'll put my, my finger behind it so I can clearly see that there's just a thin line of that black mouthpiece over the, uh, yeah, a thin line of the mouthpiece over the reed. And then I, once I have that, it's all nice and centered. I'm gonna tighten down the ligature screws, but not too tight, because uh, they can sometimes, if they're not made of really good metal, sometimes they can just snap. If that does happen to you, just break uh, back out the one that snapped and put your one good screw in the top, and then it'll get you by for right now. So, um, okay, so I've got that. And we've already talked about making a sound on just the mouthpiece and the gooseneck of the alto saxophone. And what you do is you roll your bottom up under just enough to create a little small pad like that over the bottom teeth. You don't want a whole lot because then you'll have all nothing but lip covering up this, this reed. And the reed's what's got to vibrate freely to, uh, so we can have a good sound. So I'm gonna roll my bottom up under just a little bit and I'm gonna set my two top teeth right there on the, the saxophone mouthpiece. So bottom lip under, and, and uh, also think about this. When I put my mouth around this mouthpiece, think about you know a laundry bag that's got a drawstring. Your, the embouchure, your muscles of your mouth, they're gonna kind of squeeze around this mouthpiece. And what I like to do is I put pressure using these two parts of my, my bottom lip against the side pieces of the reed right here, the side edges of the reed. And I want to also let that center of the reed vibrate freely. So I'm going to put the, my two top teeth right here, bottom up under just a little bit. And, 
and all my teeth have to be, my lips have to be up against my teeth. I cannot blow out like that because then I'll lose the strength I need to be able to have a firm embouchure. So I'm going to try that again. Bottom lip under just a little bit, only enough to cover just a little bit of the bottom teeth to serve as a pad between your teeth and the reed. So. Now what I did is I started that note by touching my tongue to the bottom side of the reed, not the edge, because that's vibrating really fast. It might sting your tongue. So you want to touch right here, just lightly, bottom lip under, just a little bit, top teeth on the mouthpiece. What I did with my tongue is I went do, 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 do. Notice all this is flat and flexed against my teeth. Super important, make sure you do that. And just practice. Now we've gone over this in lessons two and three. And then I just wanted to kind of echo that again in case you're just tuning in. And then you wanna take your neck strap, put that over your neck like so. And then I'm gonna grab the bell of the alto saxophone Pull it out of the case, close up my case. I'm gonna, there's a little lever right here that connects to this little ring right there of the octave key. I'm gonna slide this in here. And if it's tight, there's a screw right there that you might need to loosen up a little bit. Slide it in there, tighten that back down. And then you're gonna take your neck strap piece right here. Might look a little bit different than mine, it's okay. And you'll put it in this little ring right here. And notice I'm still grabbing it by the bell and I'm holding right there and I've got it hooked in. Now, just because this is hooked in, that doesn't mean you just let the saxophone just swing freely, because that's kind of dangerous. It could swing and hit something, or sometimes it gets kind of twisted and it'll pop off and it'll go crashing to the floor. This is the most delicate instrument there is among the brass and woodwinds as far as just basic beginning instruments. And uh, it's kind of heavy too, uh, very heavy. So. I'm going to get that right there. I'm going to, still holding on to the instrument with my other hand now. And I'm going to tighten this neck strap just a little bit. I'm going to move this case out of the way. Let me get this out of the way so we have plenty of room. There we go. So I'm going to get the saxophone in playing position. I'm going to take my right hand thumb and there's a uh, thumb rest right there. I'm just going to place it right under there in the very center of my where my thumbnail begins is where the center of that little rest needs to be. And then I've got these three keys right here in my right hand. Right here, there's the only ones with little, little uh, perloid buttons right there. So fingers one, two, and three go right there. And I will be using my pinky to play these two bottom keys right here. My left hand, you'll notice I've got a place right here, just a, a black dot. It doesn't do anything. It's just a place to rest your left thumb. And here, of course, that's your octave key. You need to be able to rock your thumb up to play that octave key. And then I'm gonna skip this first note up here, and this first key, and I'm gonna play this second one. I'm gonna skip this next little key right here, the this key, and I'm gonna play this next note right here and put my finger on that third one. So there's the three of the largest buttons right here. So again, I'm skipping the, the first one, going to the second one. I'm playing uh, keys two, four, and five right there. And of course my thumb's right there, and you want your hand curved like this. You don't want your fingers, and you don't want to be like so. You want your hands curved so that you actually don't accidentally depress one of these little side keys here. So, uh, so your hand's nice and, and, and wide like that. And the same thing with the right hand, because there's other palm keys right here that we'll be using later on. So I've got it right there, and I've got it centered to me right here. And if you're sitting down, it's good to put the saxophone to your side. If you're standing up like me, you can kind of have it towards the middle. And you don't want this gooseneck to be turned too much in one way, because if you do, it's going to open up this octave key. So it needs to be kind of in line uh, right here with the back side of where the octave key mechanism, that rod goes up right there. It needs to just kind of flow up like that. Don't want it too far that way or this way, because then it'll accidentally open up your octave key and you won't. You'll be frustrated, so you don't want that. So I've got the saxophone. I'm always hanging on to it, even though it's got. I've got it in the neck strap. So the first notes that we could probably try is just our first finger on this B key right here. And uh, again, I'm going to pull this neck strap up to where I can comfortably. I need to pull my belt buckle over a little bit, scratching the saxophone. Um, where I can comfortably bring the saxophone to my mouth. I don't want to crane my neck forward to get to it. 
I want to let that saxophone strap uh, bring the saxophone to me to where I'm comfortable. So I'm pushing out with this right thumb to get it balanced. I got my two thumbs holding it like so. And then uh, I need to come up a little bit more and like so. I'm trying to play softly. Let me turn my audio down a little bit. Notice my bottom lips rolled under just a little bit. All my lips are firm up against my teeth. My two top teeth are resting on top of the mouthpiece. Don't uh, don't roll your bot don't roll your top lip under as well. That's you'll have a squishy embouchure that'll go wah wah and be very unstable. So you want your top teeth on the mouthpiece, bottom lip under. And even though I don't have these other keys depressed, I'm not going to have my fingers way up in the air. I've got my fingers resting right on top of those keys, so I know right where they are when I want to press them down. So what we're going to do next is just go. B, A, and G. It spells bag. B, A, G. Just gonna go dee da da. Because what we're doing is making this tubing longer every time that we pop down one of these keys. So you may want to just go B, A, G, F, E, D on down. If you swap from your B to this middle key, that goes to a C. So I could go C, B, A, G, F, E, D. And if you wanted to, not this key right here, not the top one, but not the top E flat key, but the this low C, uh, you could just reach down there and play your low C. I've got my third keys leaking a little bit. I don't know if that's not going to come out, but so I'm going to start off with my middle finger C and work my way down. I'll go. C middle finger, the first finger B, A, G, F, E, D, C. So. Doesn't want to come out because I got a pad that's leaking. But uh, when you go down lower, I'm trying to play softer. Let me turn my audio down a little bit more. Again, I'm going to go C, B, A, G, F, E. I'll just probably stop right there. Now you heard the vibrato, the, the wah wah wah. What I'm doing is just barely, maybe like one millimeter, just moving my bottom jaw just a little bit. Like a. a I like to hit the note solid. Do, then I end the note with a little bit of trailing vibrato. It's always a nice touch. But and you want to get just practice going between that C, the C and the B and the A and G, and um, just keeping it nice and controlled. You don't want to put too much mouthpiece in your mouth, if you're getting honks, like a honking kind of goose sound, that means you've got too much of the mouthpiece in your mouth. Pull out a little bit. If you're not getting any sound at all, that means there's not enough mouthpiece in your mouth, that you're basically just clamping down the very tip of the mouthpiece and you're just, just and it won't vibrate. So you gotta put a little bit more of the mouthpiece inside your mouth so that reed can vibrate. And again, I'm putting a little pressure on the two corners of the reed right there to seal off the edges. If you hear a high-pitched squealing sound, that's because probably you have too much mouthpiece in your mouth and also air is leaking out of the side of the reed and getting that high squealing sound. So. Now, later on, when you want to go up for high notes, all you do is just rock your left thumb to hit this octave key and it'll operate this mechanism up here and you could take everything up an octave like and as you, when you go up to the high register your embouchure has to be firm or else those notes will start to get flatter and flatter as you go up so your embouchure has to become firm but when you go down to the low notes you're going to drop your jaw just a little bit to allow that reed 
to vibrate more freely. It's got to vibrate in a wider frequency. So you want to allow that to take place. After you finish playing your saxophone, okay, super important. Uh, first thing you do is just unhook yourself. And, uh, and I'm just going to take the gooseneck off. And I'm going to lay this here gently right now. And then uh, I'm going to take this reed off. And you may want to take your reed off first. That might be a better sequence of events. I'm going to take the ligature off. Don't want to drop that on the floor and somebody step on it. If somebody does, if that does happen, you say your ligature falls off and somebody steps on it and deforms it. All you do is kind of try to shape it close to what it's supposed to be, then push it back onto your mouthpiece and it will bend it back into the right shape of your mouthpiece. I've had to do that a few times for kids. So I'm going to wipe off this reed. I want to get it nice and dry before I put it back in that case because I don't want it to grow any mold or mildew. I've got it nice and dry, being careful not to chip the tip of it. And I'm going to slide it into this case. There's a flat side and there's a side that's got ridges. So I want the flat side to the flat side of this reed. The flat side of the, the ridges, uh, the flat side of this case to the flat side of this reed. So I'm going to slide it in there. And then I'll put that in my case in a little bit. And then uh, this is called a swab. You need to have a swab. And sometimes they'll, they'll give you these little felt swabs that hardly soak up any moisture at all. Um, you need one. I, I always order one. Uh, from a, just a music store. This is like a handkerchief quality. They have some others that are like silk and everything, but a handkerchief swab really kind of soaks up the moisture. And I'm gonna clean out or dry out the inside of my mouthpiece. And um, I'll just take this one end of it, kind of dry it all out, because I don't want any mold or anything in there growing, because the next time I play, I don't want to inhale or either do anything that's, it usually you're just blowing air through the saxophone, so it's not gonna come back that way. But I just like to dry it out so that there's nothing growing in that mouthpiece. So it's nice and dry. Then I'll put my ligature uh, back on the mouthpiece. Sometimes they have a cap on it. Don't need those. But, you know, if you want to, to make it protect it a little bit, that's fine. But I, I'll put those in this instrument case. And then the, the, the gooseneck, the only way you can really clean it out, they have little, little things that you can go in there and do that with. If you want to get one of those, that's fine. But a lot of my students, they just do this. They sling out the condensation. It's not spit. Not even in the mouthpiece, it's not spit. This is just pure condensation. It's when your the moisture from your warm breath hits this cold tubing, it condensates on this cold tubing, and that's that's what's what you're seeing come out. But uh, then you want to take this swab, grab the bell, and there will be a little lead weight in the bottom of this and of this little string here, shoe string actually, and I'm going to let that fish down through the bell. Notice I'm just letting it it's falling down this way, and then I'm going to kind of shove this handkerchief up into the bell a little bit. And I'm going to let this fall out the bottom. And that, I pull it toward the top. I make sure it was straight before I started doing all this. And it just cleans out all the condensation that's in this upper tubing here of the saxophone. Very little condensation down here. Most of it's going to be right up in here. Because it's a tube that we're, uh, we're, as we put our fingers down, we're making that tube a little bit longer. Uh, so that the frequencies vibrate at a lower pitch all the time. Then I'll put all these pieces back in my saxophone case. I don't want to do it, but you just put this, put it all back in there in the little places where they go. And uh, that way you want to keep everything nice and dry. Um, if you don't, you're not going to have a oboe reed soaker cup. So, uh, you know, at home you can put it in a little cup or a little glass. But at school, you know, you just run your reed under a water fountain or under a spigot, just somewhere, just let it soak. If it's the first time, try to take care of that at home. And some band directors will say, band directors will say, just put it in your mouth, just let it soak there, especially if there's a lot of people there. Yeah, yeah that's, that, that works also. It takes a little longer to it to do that, but uh, it's good. Also, a, uh, a reed that I recommend for my beginners is a Van Door number no. two. Very easy to play, super easy. It's really like a, a Rico Royal two and a half to sometimes like a three. These are a little bit stiffer than the, the Rico Royal, but these, these, the, the quality control on these are really good and they just have a great sound. But a Van Dorn two, just in the blue box, these work so good and my kids just love these, these uh, reads for my beginners and uh, middle school students. So uh, take care of your saxophone. Be careful not to bend the keys. This is very, very delicate. Uh, a lot of, uh, you know, just and, and also never trust your neck strap. Some of them, they'll just, they'll get twisted and they'll just pop right off. So always have this saxophone protected. 
It is, the, like I said, the most delicate of all instruments because of all this mechanism. There's a lot to go wrong. Sometimes little springs, little they're basically just like stiff wires that cause these keys to pop up. Sometimes they get caught on clothing, these little wires that are up in here, they'll pop off and uh, you, you just have to learn how to put them behind the correct post uh, to get those to get. So if a, a, re, a key is not popping up and down, it's probably one of those, because one of those little keys, one of those little springs uh, that's connected to it has popped off. You have to just put it behind the little post there. Um, you can watch videos on how to repair that. But uh, so be very careful. And uh, after you set your saxophone into the case, you can uh, take a polishing cloth, wipe off where your, your fingers have been. If you've got, especially if you've got uh, sweaty fingers. So uh, you want to do that so that won't take off the finish because your hands have oil and salt in them that are highly corrosive. So uh, just take care of it and it'll last you a very, very long time.